Did you know that you can spend a whole lot of zeros for a computer, for a server, for your home? Yeah, you can, you can. It's actually possible to have a server that didn't cost you anything. But of course, there's a catch, right? Nothing is free. Nothing is ever free, right? You've got to spend something, sort of, yes, no. We're gonna talk about that in this video. Before we do get into that, remember to do the subscription button, click on the button, click on the bell, so you don't miss out on anything. We release videos all the time on tech, so notify yourself when we are releasing those videos. Now, the first things first is we have gotta define, or at least tell you what a server is. Do you actually know what a server is? Well, a server could be software-based, could be hardware-based. Essentially, a computer where you install some software and it services things out on a network. If computers out on your network, if your smartphone, your TV is all talking to a computer that has software running onto it, that has some files, maybe it's got some movies and TV shows that you can watch on any of your devices, well, that computer is sort of acting like a server already, right? But we're gonna get a little bit more specific here. Maybe have a look at the tech itself and some software that you can actually be running on a computer to essentially convert the whole thing into a server, or it's more now a dedicated server rather than just, you know, your little Mac mini that is just giving some computers out on your network some files, right? That's not really, it sort of is, but it sort of isn't really a server. So zero dollars, where do you even start with this? Well, what do you already have at home that you could repurpose, that you could reuse, that doesn't cost you anything? That's where we're starting. So what you've got to do is start by repurposing some old hardware. I don't know, I mean, I'm, I'm an oldie. So I've got computers that I've had for years and years and years. I've got friends and family who have computers just sort of sitting around, laying around, not doing very much at all. Ask them, can I have your old computers? Have a look in your garage, in your, in your cupboard down the very back. Do you have a computer that is no longer being used? What about the main computer that you do use? I mean, maybe you can use that instead. Ultimately, it costs you something at one point it costs somebody, nothing's free, free, free. Costs somebody something, but now you're wanting to build a server, you've got some gear around, great, you can get started. But look, here's a little caveat though, is yes, it could be free, but if you're wanting to use this thing as a server, maybe you want to install some server software, you want to run Linux onto it, you want to run Proxmox or VMware or something like this to sort of make it a little bit more server-ish, well, it's sometimes a good thing to maybe invest a little bit of cash to get the thing beefed up. Like you, you beef it up a little bit. Maybe you want to get a little bit more RAM. Maybe you need some more hard drive space. That's not really free. Or maybe you've got some spare RAM. Hey, that's another thing. You could ask your friends and family, do you have some old RAM, some old hard drives that I could maybe have? Then you could open up your little computer, stick it full of new stuff. There you go, it's still free, sort of. So once you've got your piece of tech, you've got to find an a adequate spot where to put it, right? You need to put it somewhere so you can access or other computers can access this thing called a server, or you need to have a network card inside of it. So you can plug in a blue cable. You can put, you know, if it's on Wi-Fi, you can have to do a Wi-Fi internet, right? You need to get that started first. So then you need all the other little bits and pieces that come around with that. If you're needing to plug it in with a cable, it needs to connect to a switch of some sort or to your home router to give you internet access, all of that. So what we're talking about here is we're talking about a zero dollar server not a zero dollar home lab or full environment because you do have to spend some cash on something somewhere down the line. But if the computer itself has all the bits that you need and you can plug it up and you can get it on the network and you can do all of that sort of stuff, good, we can go from there. Then you gotta go look at the software itself. What is the sort of software that we're wanting to install onto this thing? Now, we mentioned at the very start around what a server actually is. What is the point of a server? Have a think about that. Does it run Windows? Like, let's say you've got an old PC, it's running Windows 10. You can keep it with Windows 10 and then install some virtualization software onto it, such as Workstation, VMware Workstation. You can install VirtualBox if you really wanted to. And then you can build a whole bunch of virtual machines, VMs, virtual servers, onto this computer. So the operating system is Windows 10, but then it's running all of this virtualization software on, so on top of it, and then the virtual server stuff on top of that. But if you wanna get a lot more fancy, and if you want to be able to sort of start from scratch, remove the old operating system, install something that is completely fresh, something that is completely new. So a few things that you can do, you can go fully open source. You can go and install Linux onto it. 
And Linux is awesome because you can actually get more grunt, more performance out of your computer than Windows. Windows, unfortunately, even though it's a really great operating system, does require a lot of resources. While Linux, not so much. Linux can run pretty, pretty casually. So you can go and get CentOS. You can go and get Ubuntu. You can go get any of these flavors of Linux. There's a whole range. There's lots of different sorts of flavors of Linux and a lot of them are free. So you can go and download them. You download them from the interwebs. You get the ISO, you stick it on a USB stick, plug it into the side of your computer. And as long as the computer is not super, super old, and you can boot it from a USB stick from the BIOS. You'll have to go into the BIOS and boot from it on the USB stick. You can then install that version of Linux. Now look, if you can't boot from USB, get it onto a CD or a DVD. Do you remember those things? CDs and DVDs. USB will be fine. And then you just follow the prompts and you'll install Linux and then you're done. Now, the thing with Linux as well is you can have two different sorts of Linux types. You've got one that is a GUI and one that is a CLI. GUI is a graphical user interface, which is all the, the nice bits, right? The icons, the menu, Use, all of the pretty pictures, right? The way that you would recognize a Windows or a Mac computer, that's sort of what Linux is gonna look like. But then you've also got the CLI, which is the command line interface. And this is where you can install Linux with just a big old black screen and you just have to know how to do coding. You need to know a little bit around Linux and Unix commands to be able to get your way around it. But the nice thing about doing it with a CLI is that uh, you have even more power, even more grunt available to you on that computer because it doesn't have all of the graphics, right? The graphical user interface that doesn't exist, which means all of the resources of your computer are more dedicated to the applications that you're wanting to run, to the server apps that you're wanting to run on this new server. That's something you can do. Linux, love Linux, really, really cool. The other thing you can do is you can convert this computer into a hypervisor, essentially making it into a virtualization server. where well, you're removing Windows, maybe it's running Mac OS. You've got an old Mac, that could be used. Remove all of that operating system altogether, go onto the interwebs and you can download a virtualization hypervisor. A hypervisor, essentially an operating system from a virtualization uh, company that converts your computer into a virtual server or virtualization host. And then it allows you to go and build a whole bunch of computers, virtual machines, on this computer. So an example would be VMware. VMware has this one called ESXi. You can download it completely for free off the VMware website, go and check it out. You install that onto an ISO, the same way as you could do with Linux. You just put it into an ISO, you boot it from your computer, and then you install ESXi. You do a basic configuration, it's pretty straightforward. And then you can build VMs directly on that computer. You can go and download Proxmox. You can go and download Citrix Zen Server. These are for free. That, that's what's cool. You can download these for free and then go for your life building VMs of all shapes and sizes to your heart's delight. Very cool. But of course, the only thing you got to think about is if you're wanting to do this, you've got to make sure that the computer that you are running this software on allows you to run this software onto it in the first place. So some computers have this thing called like, for example, virtual technology VT turned off or it's not available on the motherboard. And if that is the case, then you won't be able to really run virtualization software on that computer because it's a limitation on the motherboard. So when you get yourself your little free computer, your zero dollar computer, go and uh, just verify that it can actually install this software. And sometimes the easiest way is to do some Googling around the type of computer that it is or look up the model number of the computer or the model number of the CPU and just look up virtualization and see if it allows for that. Otherwise, just go ahead and download these ISOs. It doesn't hurt, they're free, they're pretty small and try to install it and see what happens. It may work and you may be surprised. But then once it's up and running, you then need to give some resources available on your computer to these virtual machines. So the more powerful this little free computer is, the more virtual machines you'll be able to build. Now we're not gonna talk a whole bunch about it, but let's just say you don't even have a little computer. You don't have a computer that you can reuse for any purposes. You can leverage the cloud, which is actually quite cool. You can spin up environments in the cloud that are for free as long as they're for demo free purposes. You're not gonna be selling anything on them. But the only thing about having it up in the cloud is that you need access to the cloud. You need a good internet connection to access it in the cloud. But then the other things that are nice sometimes about a service like this is you can access it really from anywhere. Anywhere around the world, you could access this server that is sitting in the cloud. But it's sort of no longer a home server. It's now a cloud server that is just maybe giving some stuff to your home. 
but that's an option. So one that I would use, for example, would be AWS. AWS, Amazon Web Servers has a free tier. There you go, you could go check that one out. So ultimately any computer you can use, and I mean, look, here, here's a few computers that I've got, right? I Throughout the years, I've had a collection of old desktops, old laptops, some bigger computers, smaller computers. I've got these little mini PCs that I've that I've used and all of them to some extent at some point in the years and years and years where I've been playing around with technology, they have been a server. And a lot of these I just had for years and I never really spent anything. Either people gave them to me or I got some old freebies from work. You know, sometimes when work upgrade their computers, they don't want their old computers. You can say, hey, pick me. Can I have one of those old computers? Sometimes people want to give you stuff for free. There's like, I'm in Australia, if you can tell from my dodgy accent. Uh, there's this thing called Gumtree where I've got a service where some people just give stuff away for free, for absolutely nothing. I mean, just drive. I, I have to spend petrol. That, that's it. I just have to get into my car and go pick it up. But the thing could be free. But any of these little computers ultimately can be deployed with some sort of server software in some form or fashion. So if you're getting started, here's my recommendation. Find yourself an old PC, freebie, go and install Linux onto it. If you want to learn more about Linux and you're wanting to learn more about servers and learn more about maybe hacking and the command line, go and install Linux. That's probably the best thing. If you're wanting to delve a little bit more into the Windows world and build Active Directory, like a domain control, if you want to learn about DNS, DHCP, all of that sort of stuff, go and build yourself maybe a virtual environment running VMware and then build some VMs. And you can go and download Windows Server. For example, Windows Server, you can download for completely for free and use it for a certain amount of time, 180 days for free. So it's free, but then you have to like reset it and then start again. But you can download that if you want to learn more about that. Uh, if you're wanting to share on your network some videos, some files, you can convert this little computer into a media server. You want to get really fancy, you can convert it into a NAS, a network attached storage, where you're making this computer an actual box that is servicing your network for just files. They're super, super cool. So now you gotta go and build yourself your server. Go and grab all free spare tech that you've got, go onto the interwebs, download some of your server software, and get the whole thing up and running. It's that easy. Hey, if you like this video, why don't you let me know down below in the comments. Give me a little thumbs up if you did like it and do the subscription thing as well. We release videos all the time on all things tech. Click on the bell as well so that you don't forget, you don't miss out on any of the videos that we are releasing here. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you on the next video.